So somebody asked me recently, like, how do you, what makes a player in Football Manager good? So I came up with like a light reading list that you'd be able to check out. It starts with this weird book called Mind Waves that you might want to check out so you can read that. I, I just have, there's a few more, but this is just, even this is the bare minimum of, of the reading list. You know, we've got the science of smart, you know, we've got some uh, other sport brain stuff. There's a few more things. There's this book that, you know, it's one of the essentials if you want to understand how good a player is, right? A history something, right? And, but the, you know, this isn't that bad. This really isn't that bad. You'll be able to, here, there's just a few more things. It's the Monopoly game. It helps you understand like how the money, okay. And then, then, then this, I don't even know what this is, but it is crucial. <sighs> Here's the rest of it. I just, oh, hey, do you want me to hand it to you now? Or I can just, you know, here you go. They need to have higher numbers than the other guy in video. All jokes aside, when somebody asked me this question and they were like, yeah, you know, what makes a player good on Football Manager? I was like, well, that answer's really long, but it would be a fun challenge to kind of explain the basics of that in a video that's no longer than 20 minutes. So I all, here is my best effort. If you've never played Football Manager, welcome. This is my Football Manager save, which I'm managing a team called Oriental Dragon in Portugal. We're currently leading the top flight. It's been a fun journey from semi-pro. You can check it out in the description at the Twitch link to watch it live or the live YouTube channel link if you want to watch edited 30 minute episodes of the streams, which are quite fun. I actually end up watching them myself, even though I'm the person in them. And these are, you know, the players that we have. And we click on the players and then all of a sudden we find it. Wow, he's getting better. Oh, that's cool. Nothing like a little boys and philander action on a nice Tuesday evening. You know what I'm saying? And when you click on the players, you've got attributes. And the first time I looked at this, I'm pretty sure I closed the game and then threw my laptop out the window because I was convinced I'd never be able to look at this and understand it in a way that determined like how good a player was. But what this allows to exist in Football Manager that doesn't exist in a game like FIFA is that when you look at this and you go, wow, look at all those things. It allows each player to be individual and there are never any two players that are exactly the same. You can have archetypes of players like there's archetypes of players in real life, but every player is gonna have a bit of a different flavor because they're gonna have a lot more bravery or they're gonna be very unbrave. Like Boys in Flanders is a scaredy cat. When he turns off the light, he turns on his phone flashlight before moving because he is afraid. And I've gotta be honest, I usually am too. that's okay because you know he's gifted with a bunch of other things he's got an incredibly balanced amount of touch and everything i'm gonna get too distracted here what makes a player good the first thing you need to look for is how they fit their role and football manager has provided a tool for you that makes this very easy when you are on a player you see you've got your role and duty thing down below and what you might not have known is if you click the drop down it will actually change like what is important when you click the drop down for attacking or supporting and the way this looks when you're in the tactic screen you'll be over here and it'll be like a winger on attack or support right so you're picking that role and you can click across this map right so we're going to go to striker and a striker advance forward is a very typical kind of uh, forward player and anytime you forget which color is more valuable go to striker and advance forward and that always reminds you that the green is the incredibly important and the blue is the less important but still more important than everything else that's not highlighted so you will find types of players that actually have a very they aren't as balanced as boys in flander who we're looking at there they have a very particular set of skills like emmanuel ayuriwath so when you look at this guy, you're thinking, well, she, she might not be as good as Boys in Philander or as useful as a lot of other people that have a lot of color over here. But then when you look at their role suitability, that idea changes. If I'm asking Boys in Philander to do something that is using all of that, right? Right now we have him on ball winning midfielder. But what if I scrolled down and I was like, I want him to be an advanced playmaker how good he is has completely changed, right? We've seen what attributes are going to be in play, what attributes are not going to be in play nearly as much based off what that person's instructions are. So you can highlight and isolate certain attributes and decide whether that player has a good amount of role, suit role, role suitability. And for example, Emmanuel Iruwath doesn't offer a lot of versatility, 
But if we're talking about somebody who's a ball winner, who has a lot of athleticism, is very intelligent when it comes to getting in the way of people, has the aggression of a newborn Spartan, and is a sound technical defender, even if the technical column has like literally nothing else in it, we're okay. He's survivable and an above average, very good ball winning midfielder. An example of the inverse would be Jason Serna, who's capable of playing in the exact same position as an advanced playmaker, having his attributes that are incredibly important be highlighted and be fabulous. But if I'm running this guy out and I put him down here as a ball winning midfielder, well, he's all of a sudden highlighting all you know, a lot of the things that he's just not nearly as good at. This might feel obvious, but that's because I'm using obvious examples. The difference can be much more subtle between somebody like a box to box midfielder and an advanced playmaker, but the Jason Cerna could just be not as good, and he is not as good as a box-to-box -box midfielder, because even though his attributes that are good are in there, he's being asked to do things he just can't do, at least effectively, at the level that you want. So what makes a player good in Football Manager? Number one, it's their ability to fit into the role that they're being asked to do. Number two, this creates what I like to call trump cards, because there will be some players, kind of like a Eurowath, where when you pull them up, you go, well, this guy just doesn't look like he'd be able to hang with the rest of my team. So if you're eyeballing the attributes, let's look at my starting front three, shall we? Which is Josh Silva, Armando Pereira, and Angel Zamudio. At left, you know, left forward, we've got Josh Silva. We've got wonderful numbers all over the place and a player that's more than capable of making something happen. Armando Pereira. We've got wonderful numbers all over the place, different areas. And then we look at Angel Zamudio. You've got literally three green numbers in the entire thing and a lot of what seem like very large and obvious holes. There are a few things that players can be great at in Football Manager that can actually carry them to a certain point. Now, Zamudio will never be the best player in the world because the best players in the world have this and then they have a bunch of other stuff, but there are certain things that you can have that are these trump cards and Zamudio has one of them. He's fast, but he's not just fast right? He is really fast. There is a difference between being fast enough to keep up with the Joneses and at a world-class level, we were talking like 14s and 15s and maybe some 16s. There is a difference between that and being able to fly. And Angel Zamudio can fly. There are not a lot of people in the world with 18, 19, 20 speed. And when you start sprinkling in a really good helping of agility and balance, and you've got enough stamina and work rate, to make all of this work and so that they can keep running the whole game, which Zamudio just barely has enough. Well, all of a sudden he's laying down a 7.1 in the Champions League and a 7.2 in Liga Nas. Even though he looks like a much less impressive player, he's just so freaking fast, it doesn't matter. You might be thinking, well, is that the only trump card? No, thank you for asking. I've come up with three more trump cards for you to remember. Size and strength, that's one. Like jumping reach and physical strength. We've done some tests on what attribute can like hard carry better than anything. And what we found is that when strength, when you are like significantly stronger than the people around you, it's actually the best hard carry attribute in the game. Like single attribute that if you set it to 20 and everything else to 10 makes your team better than any other attribute. So being strong and being tall can go together in pretty magical ways. Looking at Kevin Barrientos, somebody who has 19 jumping reach, for example, he's got decent strength. He also has decent speed. But with that 19 jumping reach, I've been able to wield this center back as a man who scores on average like six goals per season for his entire career, which is just weaponized. I mean, that is a significant contribution that warrants him conceding five goals defensively every year in terms of quality, which is a lot because the backup center backs I have just aren't aerial presence like that. Another example is somebody like striker Enrique Borges, where he's got pretty good jumping reach, but he has fabulous strength. I mean, this man is a Haas. You combine that with a stamina and a work rate again, somebody that's willing to run, to move, to use it, and he becomes this weapon, even though he can't move incredibly fast. He runs with the ball often. It doesn't become an issue. He's got six goals and 10 appearances in the top league in Portugal right now. Five of those are off the bench, but I wouldn't say he's a perfect example of a one-trick pony. If you're on smaller teams, you'll see players like target forwards where they have like 10s, maybe 11s at everything, but they got a lot of strength and a lot of size. Those guys can hard carry. They can play above what their attributes would indicate. The third version of the hard carry is what I call the Holy Trinity. Dribbling, finishing, first touch. Strikers that have those three things are always going to be dangerous for their opposition. 
You would love for them to add either passing or athleticism to that, but as long as they have dribbling, finishing, and first touch, they will be an issue. What can really torpedo this is terrible mentals. So if they have really bad composure, you want to train, shoot on, you know, shoot hard, that sort of thing. But the Holy Trinity for forwards can carry above its weight. And the last bit is passing and vision, because there are a large collection of midfielders that you will run into that are merchants. They are ball receiving and ball distributing merchants. But if you have a lot of passing and you have a lot of vision, passing is arguably the most single most important attribute in the game for the vast majority of positions. Passing is a hard carry attribute from the tests that we have done. It finished right up there above strength actually in the tests that we've done. So being able to pass and being able to see the field or be creative, you need kind of one of those two things to make the passing effective. That'd be you know, your flair, your decision-making or you just your raw vision like he Shin here is just cracked at vision. He's got enough passing to make it worth it. Then he's a hard carry type of player that just does one thing, receives the ball and distributes it wonderfully. Those are four things that can make a player good when you aren't seeing that they're good on the field. But what else can contribute? Obviously I'm avoiding just saying, well, if their attributes are higher, the better they are. But the third thing that we're talking about here is the fact that more attributes is generally better because even though all of these attributes are highlighted for the role, Right, Armando Pereira is a worse player than Ja Silva because Ja Silva is able to bring things to the table that are not quite in his repertoire. They aren't necessary for his role, but he's influential in the air, right? It's not necessary for his role, but he's decently strong, but he crosses at a decent clip, right? But he works hard, right? Like this not, and Pereira actually works wonderfully hard. That's not the point, but he has creativity. The higher attributes that fill in outside of that, the more versatile the player is and the more valuable they are to your team because they provide a tactical flexibility that you're not going to get otherwise. And I'm looking over here because I'm looking for one player in particular that exhibits this. Somebody that I play as a playmaker sometimes named Petr Todorov. And when I play him as a playmaker, you see what's highlighted, what he's being asked to do, control the ball and distribute it, which he can do well. But he is valuable because you fill in all these other things and all of a sudden I'll put him in a situation where I'm like, I need somebody that's competent defensively. Well, he can do that. He's got 13 tackling, 11 positioning, right? He can get there. And as such, because of this balanced attribute distribution, if he gets in the box, he can finish. He has 12 finishing. That's a really composed, decent amount of finishing. He's not unathletic. When he was coming up, I trained him to play right wing. I trained him to play defensive midfielder because I wanted to take advantage of that versatility. So those players that have 12s and 13s at everything, while they might not be the star turns that fire your tactic forward, Petr Todorov is never going to be that star turn for me. They're still valuable to your team and can contribute in a myriad of ways. And that's a word you didn't expect me to work in. Let's go to our final category. The Sneakies. I couldn't come up with a better phrase for that, but they're very, very important. And you can find them if you go to your pros, cons, and you trust the person that's providing the knowledge on a player. The Sneakies are going to be things like consistency, which you hear on Ansi Karolainen is a bit of an issue, or things like consistency being good. Yay! Consistency affects how often a player is playing at its top level compared to its attributes, right? Sometimes a game will start and they're feeling inconsistent that day and their attributes will just be worse get them off. Well, not immediately. I mean, you gotta wait a while to figure that out. You're also looking for enjoys big matches. This is their ability to handle pressure situations. If it's deep red, you have a serious issue. That player's going to suck every time that it matters. I signed a guy for 120 million one time at Manchester United. I was just... I ended up getting fired because that dude could not perform in the important matches, even though his attributes were 10 times better than Walter Mabasu, who we happen to be looking at right now. And this expands out into a couple of other things to determine how players react to situations. An indomitable spirit and his iron willed, like that is an amazing personality. This dude's incredibly tough. He shows up in big games and that's evidenced by the fact that he is just outperformed out of his mind in the Asian Cup and dragged Iraq to the semifinals currently on stream. This guy's gonna play at the absolute top level when the lights are on, which means when he's coming in for his first game with ODFC with Oriental Dragon, and he's definitely going to play well. He's going to play at the best of his ability. Personalities like Model Citizen will dictate not only how well the player trains, but how well they freaking play, how, low, how well they react to going down in situations, how well they react to being criticized. You combine that personality with the consistency, the adaptability of players, which is another hidden attribute you can only see on players not at your club. It looks like that. The difference between winning and losing might often be the personality of your players, 
and the ability they have in the hidden attributes to remain consistent, uh, to remain hard charging and to handle pressure. Like these things, if you do not know they exist and do not pay attention to them, will take players that look great and make them terrible. And will take players that are meh and make them worth signing because they can contribute in meaningful ways. Like Saad Abdul Amir Jassim, who talent wise is right on the fringe of my squad, but I can trust him to deliver when I put him on the field. And for those that don't know how they work, they're literally the same as normal attributes. They're just hidden like scale of one to 20. And then if it's in a certain range, it shows up on your scouting port a certain way. So they are just as important as any other attribute you got going on. That's what makes a player good in Football Manager is if you can check on all of those things, find players that are able to kind of hard carry above their weight and make sure that players are fitting the role that you're trying to do. That and, uh, you know, a bit of a circling back here, the higher the number is, the better they are. That's the simple answer. <laughs>